Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Welcome to another episode of Battlefield Terrain. So in this video I'll show you again how to set up an entire battlefield for your games of Warhammer 40,000. This is like the lava wasteland here that we have. I've enjoyed playing a game on this plan to play another. Uh, so this video will show you pretty much how to set up this exact setup that you see here. I'll show you step by step uh, how to go about uh, setting that up for your own games of 40 k there's no reason why you can't set up a table uh, exactly as you see here on the screen so there's a number of things going on this terrain obviously you've got these uh, ruins that we've made uh, here which is excellent for obscuring train line of sight blocking terrain essential now for games of ninth edition and this very strongly themed battle mat and also this uh, out rocky outcrop terrain as well. I'm going to show you how to build that, walk you through uh, and then step by step just building up the terrain uh, to the finish that you see here. So as per the previous video I'll try and include as many links as I can, as much help as possible uh, for each of the uh, different parts of the terrain set up here. So as before is your foundation, your starting point for building this terrain, that's your battle mat. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of hassle instead of building your own terrain board and the storage of it and it does take time and so on and uh, battle mats are a fast and effective way of getting a, a foundation for your games and you simply place your terrain accessories on top and then build uh, the board up from there so this mat here is the newer version from gamemat.eu of the lava terrain so it's hell on earth is the name of this one i've got it at six by four so for our games of night edition we just mark it off with uh, some walls across there you can use barrels pipes uh, it's tank traps whatever you want just to mark the edge of the terrain uh, just there you can get the official size of strike force size games of ninth edition uh, that option is available uh, they also do double sided mats if you want really good value so you get a design different design on each side of the match you can flip the mat over uh, and actually get in two mats in one so those options are available uh, from gamemat.eu but i'll put the link below for this particular mat uh, just, but that's your starting point great thing about it is it always, always sits nice and flat which is great nice and quiet for dice rolling figure friendly as well if resin or metal models fall over uh, as it's not as harsh on them as uh, more of a solid uh, terrain board but that's your foundation there what you can see lots of things going on but lava cracks in the ground stones uh, here as well so then you're looking to break that design up by placing your other uh, terrain features and accessories on top of that but as a foundation it's excellent you just simply uh, add, add the terrain on top but uh, the, the mats are, are good they last we've had them on the channel for years now uh, and we're still using some of the very first mats that we had on the channel so they will last a long long time if you look after them so next steps uh, an easy step and that is the wall set that you see here uh, it's, I, we need more than just this terrain this stuff's a nice feature we need more than that uh, for ninth edition we actually need obscuring a line of sight blocking terrain so the terrain that you see here uh, it's the hive walls set from gamemat.eu pre-painted terrain it's resin uh, just, i've used a whole set on this board so one set will do uh, to help fill out uh, this board i've gone for uh, regular wall sort of setup here so just the regular height walls and doors and then what you can do is you can stack them to make this six inches or higher and then we can count that as obscuring terrain uh, for ninth edition games so this one here this setup across here that one across the other side of playing all of those as obscuring uh, just to help out uh, in this ninth edition game so if i take a piece it's all modular individual pieces so that's how they come so uh, we've done some very quick uh, just extra work on these uh, just, so they come painted already uh, grey and silver and then just to make them a little bit more weathered so 
what we do with these is they come pre-painted, they come in the silver and in the grey highlight. Uh, we try and tone that down a little bit just to uh, just make it a little bit more weathered looking. So Army Painter Uniform Grey and what you do is just give it a very light dusting. So it just takes the edge off the silver a little bit, just tones it down and then tones down your highlighting uh, as well in the grey areas. So you just do that, just tones the whole thing down because the silver can be quite stark. Uh, and the, the grey highlighting quite stark as well. So a little bit of a spray uh, over those. Very, very quick to do. And then after that, just a simple wash. You can use Sarah from Sepia. You can mix up your own wash. But you're looking for sort of a, a rusty uh, brown sort of colour. Uh, even Agrax Surf Shade would do it. Uh, and then that's just painted over the top, sort of in the cracks along some of the silver. And again, the intent is just to tone it down. So uh, we would use a larger brush for that. As I think with this wash here, because we've done this one at the club, uh, mixed in uh, a bit of brown and black paint as well, just to strengthen the pigment of it as well. But that's the kind of effect that you're looking for. If you want to, you don't have to, but it just tones, just tones the whole thing down, just helps it blend in to the battle mat uh, and any other urban terrain set as well. Because this is grey and silver, you can use this on your regular urban terrain setups, your city fight games and so on uh, as well. And it's about the most diverse that you can get. You can go for all sorts of combinations, here, uh, you can build them any way you want. You could triple stack them. Uh, so you can go for the single wall option. So you just build them however you want and you get a different outcome every time. But that process I've talked about there, that's just repeated for all of these, for the doors, the different size uh, bits for those as well. They're quite good. You get, you get the column that I've shown you. You get a short wall section. You get a larger wall section. So you see how we just stack this up. You get a ruin, you get ruined ends. Very, very useful. If you're building a ruin like this, we put two in that one. Uh, you also get a double door. And they also supply you with uh, single doors in that set as well. You can see one just over there. That's a single set, uh, Hive Walls it's called. And you can check that out. I'll put a link for that in the video description below. Uh, but that one set will help you build up all of your uh, terrain, your line of sight blocking terrain, obscuring terrain, and add a bit of uh, structure uh, to the table and after that you can add your sort of more organic looking uh, train features after that as well but that's uh, the basics then just your foundational stuff so battle mat uh, and then pre-painted terrain sets you get all of that from gamemat.eu and that will help fill out the table give it some structure all right so next feature is this this train just here so this is scratch built uh, it's very very straightforward so i'm going to walk you for it uh, so i'll show you how to make this piece here uh, and you can apply that to any of these pieces uh, as one set. It's not too bad on time, this won't take you too long. Uh, the process is quite straightforward. And this was built over 10 years, about 10 years ago at least, if not more. Uh, this set just here. 2008, 2009. Yeah. yeah, and it's lasted fine, so you get du good durability out of it. It's very strongly themed, just makes something completely different from your regular sort of city fight games you can go for something like really sort of lava looking a lot of factions look really good fighting across lava terrain Tyrions look great on the board Eldar look really good Necrons Astra Militarum Space Marines so it's very very suited uh, for uh, 40k a lot of factions look great on a lava landscape and the idea of this board is like a lava landscape that sort of erupted up from underground it's disrupted this settlement or this civilization they've had to abandon the area so they've got these ruins left with all these uh, volcanoes and uh, earth being disrupted and broken up so a very sort of atmospheric and volcanically active area here all right so your foundation your starting point for these is the base there's lots of different materials you can use you don't have to use the materials that uh, we use here uh, but through trying different things uh, i've found that vinyl floor tiles are pretty good so these are 12 by 12 yep. and they are just a few millimeters thick uh, and that's the that's the tile just there we used to use them for actually building whole tables with uh, but the mats are much more preferred much more durable much more easy to store and so on uh, but for making terrain uh, all these terrain pieces sit nice and flat and so the foundation for that is these vinyl floor tiles you can get those from the hardware store uh, in all different shapes and sizes and textures and so on uh, and then what you simply do is take that vinyl floor tile and add, cut out the shape that you want so a smaller shape here larger shapes 
uh, a really large stake. This is 12 by 12, so it's almost a whole tile used for that terrain piece just there. Vinyl's an interesting uh, substance. As it warms up, it will settle to uh, the, the shape or the level that it's on. So if you have a vinyl floor tile in a warm room and it's at the edge of a board, it will gradually uh, just bend down uh, off the edge. So if you ever get them where they're out of shape at all, then just sit them on a flat surface at room temperature and, and they should start to settle down uh, and go nice and level for you. But it doesn't use, it's not usually a problem at all. These sit nice and flat. We store them flat and they just sit. There's no bend in that at all. So that's quite important. You get something that sits flat for you on the table. The worst thing is to have things that buckle and curve and bend. You've got wobbly terrain. Uh, it is a nightmare. So uh, it's a good foundation to have. Once that shape is cut out, so you cut it out to that shape, give it a good sand over the top. You want to break up and scratch the surface so that your other materials, your glues and so on, are going to stick uh, to that surface. So at this point you've got your shapes cut out. So your one pack of floor tiles won't cost you very much at all and then you can cut out all the shapes that you want for the terrain piece. There's a larger one just there. That was just one floor tile just, and you, you cut out nice uh, curved edges and so on. Take away the harshness of them. Sand over the top. Then to build up your height here, so for this mini vol volcano, this larger volcano, just polystyrene packaging. So you take that, use PVA glue to stack it up, uh, build it to the height that you want, and then shape it by simply using a modelling knife uh, to cut out the shapes and to uh, just build the shape that you want. So you stick on your squares, you build it all the way up, then use a knife just to cut the edges off and to create the shape that you want. And so that's been done for this one. I've built up some ridges, a bit of height on this one here here you can see it been done there as well so if you press that it's actually soft soft enough it's polystyrene just white polystyrene underneath that but it's an easy effective way of building up the height that you need and then these rocks that you see are just real rocks pva glue stick them into the design jam them in between the polystyrene just to grip them in lots of pva glue you'll be using just to stick everything in place so polystyrene to build up these features real rocks uh, as part of the train, just give that jagged kind of edge. Just love adding these in. Sticking them into the polystyrene, going quite nicely. Another one here and here. Real rocks being used there, just merging them uh, with the polystyrene. So very effective, very easy to do. Uh, cost effective as well as a nice jagged rock sticking up there as well. So rocks all stuck in place. Then onto the smaller rocks, so you'll see them here. Just smaller stones. And then the fine, I mixed the finer stuff, just normal sifted sand uh, across here. So this won't look anything like the colours you see here, won't look like this at all. It'll all be white looking just with the stones stuck on top. Uh, but you're dropping the stones, again, lots and lots of PVA glue, dropping the stones on, dropping the sand across, so lots of gluing to do, uh, then leaving that to dry for a good while uh, to get those in place. But that's all natural rocks and sand covered over the whole. Uh, polystyrene. So you want to cover the polystyrene entirely because you'll be spraying this. Uh, the spray will disintegrate the polystyrene. So you want to make sure that the whole thing is covered up uh, and sealed up and that means you'll be able to spray over the top nice and quickly. One other feature that you'll see, I encourage you to do it if, if you can get a hold of the materials, and that's these jagged burnt out trees. There's one here, you can see that one there, look at that, with the roots. Another one here. This one, my favourite one this old jagged tree. They are real. Those have been taken from my dad's bonsai collection. Often you'll get casualties, ones that don't survive uh, for whatever reason, and so I've been able to get a hold of those and use them uh, on the terrain. Uh, alternatively, you can get them, uh, some of these are roots, some are actual plants. So this is like a whole plant, and there's the roots just there. Other times you can flip them up the other way and it's the roots that you can use as the branches. Uh, but see if you can source those yourself from somewhere. Uh, shrubs, plants from the garden, you'd be surprised at some of the root formations that you get look great. Uh, you might find them in the woods uh, or you can uh, get a hold of them uh, from plants that have died. So just something you keep a lookout for. Uh, it's something worth trying to get a hold of. Uh, and if you do find them, storing them uh, and using them to build terrain. But I had a number of these collected, like a bag of them, uh, and it was a good opportunity to incorporate them into some terrain. And again, they'll just look natural sort of wood colour, uh, but then we'll, again we'll spray over the top of those just to blend them all in this sort of charred trees. You can imagine like a, the landscape was perhaps a lush forest at some point, but it's all been 
that turned to chaos here in these burnt out trees and what's left I just think they're a great feature so I really encourage you to try and get a hold of them if you can uh, but it's really something you, you need to kind of keep a lookout for uh, and get a hold of as the opportunity arises but you can see them built in there's a one running across here there's some and again you can sort of stick them into the polystyrene terrain there's a larger branch running down here just all blended in with the rocks and the sand just there so once you reach that stage you've stuck on all the stuff that you want there's no reason why if you want to go completely 40k theme uh, that you can start adding in burnt out wrecks as uh, buses up dead models tanks as uh, all those kind of things you can add in if you do go down that route then it will make it 40k only terrain I haven't done that with these so it means you can use it for other gaming systems such as Age of, Age of Sigma for example which this this setup would look particularly nice if you took away the walls and just went organic here then you could have a really nice Age of Sigma setup so it's up to you if you want to start bringing 40k stuff in to the terrain but you could really could sort of mold that into the terrain and make that a feature as well it certainly would be a very cool option if you want to go solely 40k uh, but then again if you did have some 40k elements this you could easily cover it up for age of sigma wouldn't be a problem just obscure it for those particular games so the next stage is painting these uh, so it's obvious really you're looking to spray them black and it's just spraying the whole unit so the whole thing uh, is all the way across around quite straightforward so just chaos blacks an excellent spray from games workshop use that to spray them all up and you're spraying everything so the rocks, I think these rocks are like a slate grey originally. The stones, the sand, the base, the polystyrene because that's been sealed up with uh, the sand and the stones. Just make sure you do that. If there's any holes anywhere, uh, the spray will get in and it will eat away uh, the polystyrene underneath. So just make sure that you dab on the glue, get the sand onto the, the design. Just seal the whole thing with PVA glue and sand and stones and it'll be fine. You'll just be able to spray the whole thing, including the trees as well. Just spray those up. They were brown originally, sort of natural colour. Uh, spray those up. Uh, just to match them in with the train. Oh yes, one other thing. One other thing that's good fun. Remember doing. I remember sitting there one evening doing this. The lava. So on here, you take your tube of PVA glue, squeeze it on top, and then just watch it dribble down and form its natural paths down the side of the volcano. That was the fun piece of terrain to make, uh, and that effect that you see there. That's just PVA glue just being dribbled down the sides of the mountain. And that was actually really good fun to do. It was on a mini version of it just here as well. Uh, but really sort of strongly themed. You can see it, if you look at it in the distance. It's a great feature to do. Had to do a little volcano uh, for this terrain setup. So I encourage you to do that. It's good fun. Uh, and easily done. Just uh, PVA glue dribbling down the side of the mountain. So you've built your terrain. Uh, you've sprayed your base, sprayed it all in black. So highlighting colours uh, here. So... Instead of using regular paint, you can get through paints a fair bit. So you can go to your art shop and get a hold of some tubs or tubes, larger tubes of just standard acrylic paint. Colours you want will be yellow. I would say yellow and red. You don't have to buy orange because you can mix the yellow and red together to make orange. But you can buy orange if you so wish. Uh, but the main ones would be just red uh, and yellow. You also want... Uh, you can buy grey or to control the grey just buy a black and a white just standard artist acrylic you can get it in larger tubs again won't cost you very much if you start using games workshop paints it's going to cost you a lot because you, you've got a lot of work a lot of uh, painting to do you can use up a lot of that material so you get a hold of some cheaper acrylics will do just as good a job that's what we did for these didn't use games workshop paints uh, for terrain you've got to sort of think a bit bigger in scale uh, as far as paint's concerned, if you ever have to paint anything for terrain, uh, you may w well need to use uh, a larger supply. So the, the usual smaller GW paints, not so good an idea. So the red, uh, around you wanted that sort of glowing lava sort of landscape, uh, and just to make sort of a, a warmth to it, so you can see, you can see it clear enough uh, around the sandy sort of areas, as you see here is your red orange and then i started to use yellow on the lava just to glint it up i think the first colors that we did just looking at the way this has been done as we went for the grays first of all so you're mixing up sort of a medium gray and you're sort of a larger dry brush and you're just quickly dry brushing across the whole thing and then once that medium shade of gray has been done they're mixing more white 
and go for more of a stark final highlight across areas like this. And that just lifts the whole terrain out. So you're looking for your higher features to be highlighted in that way. So again, top of the rocks, even the wood, just to bring it to life. Just plain black is, is too flat, so this, this grey just helps lift it. You can really pick up the bark on the trees just here. So any higher areas is the rule, is done in the grey. Same with the tree, highlighted just to pick out all the branches and the detail. We already picked up the, the natural bark on this and the roots really well. Tops of the rocks all in grey. There's one across the other side, see the tops of the rocks all in grey, so stick into that theme. And then after that you're trying to create the lava sort of glow. So for that you're using uh, red first of all. So you can see a red highlight around here. And the red and the black sort of starts to turn a brownie kind of colour which is great. And then after the red uh, you're then putting, mixing in yellow with it to make an orange kind of colour and again running a highlight around. And anywhere else where uh, the heat of the lava would be. So for example where the lava's running down here, uh, it's, I would do the highlighting around that just to represent the glow of the lava coming down. So you can see the grey area, and then you're over the top of that you're highlighting with the red and the orange coming down in that area just there. Uh, it's underneath this rock where the heat would be and the light would be coming up, I highlighted that with the orange and the red as well. So you can see it around there. This rock is a good example. You see the grey highlights at the top fading down to the warm glows of the red and the orange there for the lava. So that's the general rule that's stuck to. That's uh, so whatever terrain piece you see, that's the, the way it's been done. Then for the lava finish, that's just been painted by hand. So red, orange, and then yellow. If you want to strengthen the yellow, add a little bit of white to it, but not too much. And you can just uh, dab little dots on there just to pick that out and to bring it to life. And again, if you do this terrain set, it's just very doable. It's really good fun to do. I encourage you to make the lava feature because it just stands out so well on the board. Uh, it's so well worth doing. So once that's done, that's pretty much finished. There is another option. If you want to do this, I've actually put, and you maybe can't see it too well on camera, but there's some uh, blackened uh, grass on here, static grass in patches. It's here and here and here. So static grass, you can get a hold of it. Burnt grass, be able to find that on eBay. Uh, get a tub of that. That's optional, you can add it on if you want, but I wanted to add in, uh, I've got the trees, so I thought I wanted to put some burnt grass onto the train feature as well, so you can add that on. Again, just use PVA glue uh, to dab that onto those areas and sprinkle uh, the static grass on top. You can use tufts as well if you can get a hold of them, so that burnt kind of look. Uh, those would look good as well. So, a bit of a walkthrough on that one, but that's just guiding you through this whole terrain setup. So whatever terrain piece you see, uh, for this terrain, that's the exact same process all the way through. So that's covered. Now, the next stage is the placement of it on the board. So we'll put this piece just here. Stones and scatter and then lichen. So, lichen, again, sort of the burnt out kind of theme. Uh, it just helps to blend terrain pieces in uh, to the board. This has actually been dyed. So I use like a black ink here, so it's regular green lichen. Couldn't find any that was in black, you might be able to source some, check out on eBay, uh, Black Lichen, you can look it up to see if you can get a hold of it, it might be quite hard to get a hold of, so instead you can take regular Lichen, whatever colour it is, say green, uh, and then some black ink on it uh, to dye it, so you soak it in it, leave it to the side to let it dry, and then we've used a pack of that for, for years now uh, on the train, it's worked out really well, but it just helps to break things up and just to merge it all into the battle mat. And then the stones and scatter, it's actually the urban stones and scatter which I've talked about in a previous video, the Nakmund video. Um, so that's taking your sifted stones as, and then I actually spray them as, with the stealth spray from Montana Gold. Code for that is 7070. Uh, I put the stones all out in a tray and just spray them in the tray, give them a shake, spray them again as, and then uh, it's, I then take, you can take some army painter leather brown and give them a, a dash of that just to uh, mix up the colours or you can add inks and washes as well just to create that natural look with the stones. But because they're that nice dark kind of grey, they actually fit really well on this mat so you're able to recycle and use them in a different terrain setup. So I, I'm a big fan of using the stones and scattering lich and it just merges the whole thing so the terrain just starts to merge into the battle mat which is what you want uh, just to make the whole thing look nice and natural so you can see some of the lichen being used just there um, 
here and stones are scattered just blends it takes the edge off the terrain just helps to merge it in to the board that's pretty much it then you've got tra uh, terrain accessories so this is the 40k accessories set very cool little bits from my old building projects I've talked about this in previous videos just to add those in randomly there's a space marine helmet there's a tower pulse carbine just leave it scattered on the board there is a astromilitarum toolkit <laughs> just spare bits uh, from kits here's a plate I think it's from a space marine vehicle or a guard vehicle just buckled and bent sprayed silver washed with uh, probably seraphim sepia and then agrax surf shade and then given a dusting of silver and you've got a nice little bit of, of a terrain feature to add in all those little details I uh, really do help to make the difference. There's 40k train accessories, boxes and barrels, just to give that a little bit of a 40k theme. Uh, I think that's a nice touch to add in as well. Yeah, then there's the mystery item here. People will be asking about this pipe setup. This is club train. We're not sure where this is from. So as I can't really coach you through on this. It does look very cool though. Uh, but it's a train set that comes, it's modular pipes. I'm sure you could create something like this yourself, uh, but modular pipes. And then you get little corners and junctions on them. I've just gone for the red theme uh, here, just to add another area of interest through the board. It's not essential, but uh, uh, it does look quite cool uh, on the board. But other than that, uh, everything else that you see on the table here uh, has been covered in this tutorial. So if you want something a little bit different, a nice little lava theme uh, that really will help an army pop on the table, uh, then consider getting a hold of this lava wasteland here as an option for one of your games uh, for your games of 40k nice terrain set up here one of our favorites this one uh, very very atmospheric uh, something completely different uh, for your games of 40k so as mentioned i'll try and put as many links as i can in the video description below and also in the comment section as well but that's basically how it's done so the same principles as before foundation in the form of the battle map the nice lava theme uh, then uh, that's the hell on earth battle map then the hive walls been taken from gamemat.eu. One set will do. That will help create uh, some nice rigidity to your terrain setup. Some nice line of sight obscuring terrain to use. Uh, then we've run through uh, the full lowdown on how to create these from start to finish. Uh, so I've described that to you verbally. That's exactly how it's done. So if you follow that, that advice, then you should be able to create the terrain exactly as you see it here. It's great fun to do. Just gives you a break from painting models and you can have a terrain set that you can use for life. If you look after it well, which we've been using this terrain for about over 10 years now, uh, then you can get loads and loads of games out of it. Uh, a very strong theme. Then we've talked about stones and scatter, lichen, battlefield accessories, just to blend the whole thing in. And that should give you uh, a nicely themed terrain setup for your games of 40K. We'll finish the video as in the previous, with a musical interlude and a finish here just to capture the flavour of this battlefield. Links in the video description below and in the comments section. Keep a look out for more battlefield terrain tutorials. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.